so like 10 years ago, when Sarah and I first got together, we used to do this thing where we would, at just random times, we would write, I love you on the palms of each other's hands, just as a reminder, you know, I'm here, what we have is really special. And at the time it was just a cute thing that young couples do, but I had no idea the meaning that that would have almost a decade later. You see, if we fast forward to two years ago, in one day, we went from excitedly looking forward to the birth of our second child to me having that child on my chest, trying to keep him warm because Sarah had had to go back to for life-saving surgery and there was a good chance that she was going to die. And, you know, I cried. Who wouldn't? But at the same time, I had peace. And that's a peace I didn't expect to have. So the surgery was a success, but the crazy plot twist is that a day later, she developed pneumonia. She woke up in the middle of the night, unable to breathe, lungs filling with fluid, and it was a scary, scary time. They called me at like 3 a.m. and I broke every speed limit I could find on my way to the hospital to get to Sarah. And she was eventually put into an induced coma, put on a ventilator for the rest of that week. And that was easily one of the hardest and darkest weeks of my life. But before they put her under, I was holding her hand, I told her that I loved her, and she was so weak she couldn't even tell me that back. But I felt her hand move and I looked down and she wrote, I love you, on the palm of my hand. And with that, 10 years of love exploded in my heart. As she lost consciousness, I knew that we were okay. What we were going through certainly was not okay, but we were okay. There was nothing left unsaid. There was n there was no lies. There was no there was no animosity. There was no nothing. There was just lots of love and an eerie peace. It was such a strange moment, but I couldn't have been more grateful that that was the way that it happened. As that week progressed, I spent my time pinballing between Sarah and Seth and Josiah trying to make sure everyone was looked after. Oh, I love you, Mommy. Good boy. It was almost impossible to process, but what I decided to do was to tell the story. When I got home on a Tuesday night, I remember going exhausted into the bathroom and I was thinking about this and the unintended side effect of all of this pain was that I had incredible clarity. I knew I could see my life in such clear relief that I just knew every priority I had uh, and I knew exactly what I had to do at any given moment because it was all so incredibly clear in my mind and I knew that that was a result of what I was going through. I was aware I was living this completely pivotal moment in my life but what I didn't know was how do I hold on to that? Because even though I wanted the pain to go away, I desperately wanted the pain to go away, I wanted that clarity to remain. I wanted to carry it into the rest of my life so that I never just bob along with the flow, but I have purpose and have passion and know exactly what's important to me. And that was what I did. I walked into the bathroom that night and I opened my phone and I turned the voice recorder on and I just started telling what happened that day. So, um... I thought it might be a good idea to record some thoughts before they evaporate into the ether. So we went in on Sunday to have our baby. Not only did I tell my phone every single night, I told my friends, I told my family, I told anybody who would listen. And it wasn't because I was looking for sympathy or even comfort in a lot of cases. It was because I was trying to make sense of what was going on around me. And until I told the story, there was no way I was going to be able to make sense of it. And so I just kept telling the story over and over again until it started to make sense. I think this is why I emotionally recovered from 
what went on a lot faster than I thought I would. It was because I went through the story so many times in such a short space of time that I, I developed a, a, an insight into it. I, I was able to put it in a box that made it make sense in my life. In an experience like that, there's a hundred other experiences that you know you're going to forget if you don't record them. You know, I went home just to steal a few minutes, spending time with Seth to give him some sense of normality that week. And I remember he was just so angry. And uh, at one point I was trying to figure out what was going wrong. And I, and I said to him, buddy, are you just angry because you miss mummy? And he burst into tears. And I, and I remember he and I just sat on the lounge and just cried together for a long time until we both felt better. But the continual building of all of that pain had to get processed somewhere and you know at the end of this process we came out the other side all four of us came out of that hospital and came home and I am incredibly grateful for that because I don't think for a second that I deserve any pity or sympathy it more than anybody else because my family came home at the end of the day and there was a guy that I met in the hospital who was uh, one of the um, orderlies that was in the hospital working because his wife died in that hospital and he found purpose in his life after that by working in that hospital and helping others and you know I was prepared for that to be my life too I guess during that process but it wasn't I came out of that situation with Sarah and with the ability to love her for years to come and so I don't think of myself as somebody who deserves any kind of pity. It's just a case of I'm just so grateful that we came out the other end of it. And it's been just on two years now since all of this happened. And we're still dealing with the fallout. We're still dealing with the healing. It's taking a lot longer than any of us expected that it would, but it is happening. And so I'm grateful for that. And sometimes if I get complacent, I still go back and I listen to those recordings because when I do, that sense of clarity returns. It doesn't matter if the kids are doing something that's rubbing me the wrong way or if Sarah said something that I didn't agree with. All of a sudden, all of that, all of that just evaporates. My priorities come back to the front. And so even though I wish the whole thing hadn't happened, I also recognize that I have grown in a way that I never would have grown had it not happened. And I'm grateful that I was able to use the circumstance at, to leverage my maturity, not to fall into a black hole, which would have been very easy to do. And so I encourage you to do the same thing. What I, what I discovered through this entire process is that by telling my story, I was writing my story. Yes, the things might have happened to me, but what was more important than the things that happened to me was what I then did with those things. And so from then on, I recognize that even today, my life is still in my control. I have the ability to write my future. There may be a bunch of variables that I can't change, but the ones that I can change can change my life and affect the outcomes. And so I encourage you to write your own story. I'm not unique. I'm not the only one that's had pain. You have had pain, I'm sure. No one gets off in this life free. We, it doesn't matter whether you've had emotional trauma or sickness or injury or whatever it may be. It might, might be economic pain. Whatever it may be that you've gone through, your story is not finished. You have the capacity to tell that story and to write the end of that story. And I've been dwelling on this for the last two years and wanting a way to tell people that they still have control over how their story ends. This is just the way that I decided to do it. And so if my experience means anything, if you can resonate with anything that I've said, please know that you have control over the outcome of your life. And if your life is going great right now and you have uh, a lot of opportunity ahead of you, utilize it. Don't just sit back, take full opportunity because sometimes stuff like this happens in your life and totally derails what you thought you wanted to do. So never waste a moment if life's going great, but if life's not going great, also recognize that you have control over where you're going next. And I encourage you to write the end of that story.